So, Colin, um, you mentioned Global Fabric yeah. as being one of the new services that you're uh, launching here within BT and BT Business. How, uh, how would you summarize what exactly Global Fabric stands for? Right. Yeah, well, no, great question. Uh, Global Fabric is one of our big bets. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it is one of the things that we think will make BT relevant to our customers' needs as we go forward into the future. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, it is there we are creating the world's largest and best interconnection fabric mm -hmm. for cloud and multi-cloud. Uh, as we talked before, there's challenges around the complexity. This is about removing the friction of moving workloads into the cloud mm -hmm. and distributed workloads and securing them and creating a network that is the, uh, has the lowest energy use out there in the market right now. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at, compared to our existing network to achieve these things, 76% less electricity than the previous one. Well. And uh, it is a micro-segmented network. We've abstracted, you know, if we go into the technical stuff, we mm -hmm. have created a multi-service edge so we can serve internet, but we can also still serve those who need critical things like IVPN and MPLS mm -hmm. and also Ethernet. We don't care now. We can serve all of them in this core. And we've created this core at the doorstep of the cloud. And then we've created this core and made it highly resilient and highly diverse. Mm -hmm. In each, we will have interconnectivity with multiple providers in multiple locations so people can trust in every availability zone around the world for the big hyperscalers. Mm -hmm. And this is a superhighway for the cloud that will provide a deterministic SLAs end-to-end -end so people can trust that when they connect the cloud that that journey and their end-user experience and their applications actually achieved. But not only that, we're starting to address these things like sovereignty. Mm -hmm. This is really, this network can now start to take into account, you know, this concept of data sovereignty is about, you know, is that hard drive in the country of where you use? Is yep. that cloud instance a sovereign cloud? Well, what we're starting to see is that's, that's about data at rest. What we're starting to see is um, the regulators to look at data in motion. Okay. So can we actually geofence traffic? You know, there's this concept of de uh, uh, deglobalization, or there's also mm -hmm. there's a lot of strife. You know, there's a lot of um, geopolitical challenges out there as well. Yep. This network allows you to take business intent and bring it into the network. And the network is clever enough to understand those business intents, to treat your data that is in motion. Does it need to stay in that country? Does it need to avoid that country? Does it need to be um, the lowest cost? Or does it need to be the fastest route? Now, all of those things we can unlock with the data now where we have abstraction. And uh, it also, uh, I would say, is it is now moved into the cloud world where it has a digital front end. Mm -hmm. So there's what, you, you know, if you're developing apps, we've got modern microservices apps where your apps can inter interact with the network to take inventory out to understand greater context. Mm -hmm. Or there's new portals that have sort of um, cloud-like interfaces. So it makes it really easy to interact, it really visual, and, it, and the network understands the applications as well. And when you make the choice, you can design things that really unlock value for the customers. And then, of course, there's the brilliant managed services for the very large uh, customers, the CPS customers, as we call them, or, or the in, in multinationals. We allow them to do the sort of white glove treatment to um, uh, take care of every need that they have yeah. on behalf of them, almost as, a, as an additional part of their business. This network is going to transform how people will consume cloud. Um, the hyperscalers themselves are really excited. Some people say, oh, you know, are the hyperscalers a threat? In this case, we're as one. Okay. Yeah, we're building together. Mm -hmm. We're building like fury right now, and it's an incredible, exciting period.